Right now, I'm about 50-50 joining the Army. At home, everything's great. There's not a real big push for me to leave the house. I'm telling myself that I need to grow up, but at the same time, I'm telling myself, you know, I don't want to grow up. I just want to be a kid. Once upon a time, America had a military draft. Three times in our history, it has been necessary to fill the ranks with those told they would serve. The last time, 1973, and since then, it has been on a volunteer basis. Some would prefer a return to the draft, saying it would make America stronger and teach younger generations about service and commitment. Others believe that would be a huge mistake, as the current system does just fine in getting a quality force. However, what do we then make of a recent study indicating 71 percent of potential military recruits are washed out for things such as prescription drug use, tattoos, and simply being far too fat to serve? Our guest was senior American commander of U.S. and coalition forces in Afghanistan, now a distinguished practitioner in residence at the School of International Service at American University. Retired Lieutenant General David Barno joins us today. Lieutenant General, good to see you again. Great to see you. This was absolutely astounding when I first saw this from the recruiters and from some of the stats from the Defense Department. Tattoos, drugs, obesity, S seven out of ten applicants fail to meet Army Reserve standards on mental, moral, and physical reasons. Does this mean we're getting a less than qualified force to lead our country right now in military service? Well, actually, it doesn't, but uh, the bigger issues for the country may be why are 70 percent plus of our young men and women not qualified to even compete to enter the military? Those 70 percent don't make it in the door. Uh, so the 30 percent that the military does bring in are exceptional young men and women. They've been through all of these screens successfully, but it's sobering to think about a nation where uh, we're growing a generation where seven out of 10 Americans can't even qualify to you know, put their right hand up and volunteer to be in this military. What is it, now let's get down to that, the volunteer issue here. What is it that the American military then is not doing in order to perhaps reach the current generation and get them to at least seek out the possibility of a military career? Well, I think there's a few things that uh, need to be looked at. Many of those restrictions make eminent sense. I mean, we don't want people in with criminal convictions. We certainly don't want people in that have uh, significant drug dependencies or history of drug abuse. Uh, that's not good news. We don't want those people carrying weapons and being deployed overseas. So that makes a great deal of sense. But it might be time to take a look at uh, how the military screens for things like overweight and obesity, uh, perhaps a bit on things such as tattoos. Tattoos, in terms of how prevalent they are in society, are completely different today than 35 years ago when I was uh, first coming into the military. And it's not beyond the realm of the possible to think about whether the military might want to have an extra week or two on, on the front end of basic training is essentially a opportunity to take some weight off people that otherwise would be qualified so they can get in the door and then start their physical fitness program. So might be time to be a bit more creative. Doesn't this say something though about America right now when you, and you just mentioned physical fitness, because I've talked to a number of recruiters and they say that quite frankly, what they're getting are men and women who are coming in who simply are not in the shape that you would expect anyone from the age of 17 to 21 or 22 to be. They are woefully out of shape. They are simply not even able to do the basics themselves Themselves. What does that tell us about our society in general then? Well, I don't think there's any disputing that that's true across all of young Americans, men and women in our society today. And we've seen this trend continue over the last 20 years. In anyone who's got a uh, smartphone and watches kids around in the malls and restaurants with the smartphone in hand realizes how little time, you know, young men and women, teenagers are spending outside in sports or playing or doing things that are physically active today and how much time they're spending on their smartphones. Uh, how much time they're spending online, how much time they're spending sitting down stationary. So this is going to be a long-term trend in society. The military has got to think about how to deal with that. What about the basic desire to serve your country? Is it even there anymore, as we might have seen it 10, 20 years ago? I actually think it is there. I think it's strong in, uh, and it's very encouraging in many ways. Uh, I find that uh, there's a lot of people out there who traditionally we might not think of as coming into the military, you know, people that are in firms in Silicon Valley that are working for Google or Microsoft, people that have very high tech backgrounds that want to find a way to serve their country. And they may not want to be full time on active duty, but they might want to be in the National Guard or the Army Reserve or the Air Force Reserve uh, and find a way to do something con to, to contribute. And these are very talented young men and women. I, I run into them as I travel around the country, and I think they're still out there, and we should be very happy about that. No disrespect meant to those who volunteer, but in your opinion as a career military officer, would we be better off here in the year 2015 if we had a draft? 
I don't think so. I don't, I don't think from the standpoint of getting better quality in the door, I don't think that would help us any because we're, we're meeting those quality standards now. We're only doing it with 30% that are actually qualified to, to uh, put their right hand up and volunteer, but that would be true in a draft as well. That's that very same pool you're drawing from. You're not going to draw from the 70% disqualified with a draft. And, and the fact of the matter is that a nation served by people that volunteer to step forward and put themselves in the line of fire I think we're better off with that than by compelling people who really don't want to be there to be in the force and then potentially to send them into very tough positions overseas. No leader really wants to deal with that. We the just, civil military part of that's another question. Do we, do we have enough engagement out there in the population as a whole where only a, less than 1% of that population serves? That's a different question. We just spoke with Karen Vaughn a few moments ago from Concerned Veterans of America, and we were discussing the fact how what a logjam it is for our veterans, how it's taking them months to get any help whatsoever. A lot of members of the military come back from serving overseas, missing body parts. They're suffering from a lot of different mental problems as well. How do we then get to the kids today and tell them that the military is still a good idea and that we will take care of you when you serve your country when they see what's happening now with the VA? Well, I think that's one of the most troubling aspects of reading all these headlines week after week about the VA is, you know, it sends the message that the nation's not doing a very good job taking care of those that have served in the front line in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's, that's very sad to see. The VA is a giant organization. It serves millions of veterans, not just this generation or this era, and it's struggling to bring itself into the 21st century from its benefits to its health care. And I think that the, uh, the White House is going to continue to have to put very tough scrutiny on the VA to get them to, to, again, modernize themselves, transform themselves, become a 21st century VA instead of what's really a, a, a mid to late 20th century organization that does a lot of things the way that no other American business does today. And that's one of the reasons why it's so slow to bring veterans up to where they need to be with, with their benefits and with their health care in some cases. 20 seconds left. What would you tell a young man or a young woman watching this right now sitting on the fence about whether or not to join the military? There's no more exciting career you could possibly find than being in the U.S. military. That was my experience. I think that's my son's experience. You both uh, served in the military. Uh, you'll do things and you'll contribute in ways that won't be anything like the rest of your life. And it's still something every young man and woman should think very, very hard about. It's a great opportunity. Absolutely well put. Lieutenant General David Barno, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks very much. All right, my pleasure. Let's change up a little bit. How cool is it when Iron Man is involved in showing what the future of robotics will be like. I mean, seriously. Tony Stark shows up and says that this is what's going to happen. And oh yeah, by the way, here's a gift from me to you. Wait for this. It's coming up next right here on Midpoint. Don't miss it.